Here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to do something called narrative mapping, uh, which basically is storyboarding, right? Um, so I want you to look in your packet for the narrative mapping handout. So this is great to work on the skill of both choosing importance or key ideas and details and summarizing text and choosing importance, depending on if you're looking at literacy strategies or the standards-based skills or summarization of text. So this is a great, great way to do it, but it's very purposeful. What you're going to end up doing is creating a performance of this text using all the tools we have. But before you can do that performance, you have to figure out what's important to share. How do you tell this story? What are the important events of the story? What are the critical events? You can't tell the whole story. It's too long, right? So you only get four moments to tell. What are the four most important moments of this text, the four key moments of the text that you have to have to tell the story? OK? That's what you're going to figure out. So you're going to get back into your group of six that you were just in. With that group, you're going to sit down and figure out what, for you all, are the key important moments. You all have to agree. And you all have to write them in your sheet. And you just need a word or phrase. So for instance, if the collapsing bridge is one, just write collapsing bridge. You know, you don't need to write an essay there. Just write a word or phrase to capture each of those moments so you're all in agreement. Like, we all believe that we need to show the bridge collapsing. That's a key moment, OK? We can leave out the teacher's story, so let's not let's leave that out. Or the teacher's story is really important. Let's put that in. Okay, so you have to decide what are the four important moments in this story to tell the story. Okay, you ready to go? Okay, into your group of six, figure it out, and I'll tell you what's going to happen after that. Okay, everybody, look up at the screen, please. Wherever you are, you can look up here real quick. So we're going to do a great practice. The great arts integration practices, like I said, aren't hand turkeys, right? No real artist in the world makes hand turkeys you know, in their studio. So arts integration, when it's really good, is about bringing in real world practices that artists really do into the classroom. So this idea of, you may have heard it called tableau before. Um, but I like to call it stage pictures, because creating with images is what directors do on the stage. There's a famous director, his name is Peter Brook, and he says that many years from now, you won't remember the words in a play, but you'll remember the images. And the images take you back to the, to the, to the theater play. So this idea of stage pictures is really big. If you watch any, like if you watch the Tonys or you go to a Broadway play, you'll see that it's really constructed in stage pictures. So to teach this to kids is really wonderful. So here's one of the most famous plays these days, right? You know what it is? Hamilton. And this guy, David Diggs, was actually my student at Brown. He was in my class for doing this work. He did it in schools. He was our first Brown student to go into schools and do this as a teaching artist. He just won the Tony, and he's coming out with his own movie. I think it's coming out right now. Um, David Diggs right there. Uh, but this is an image from Hamilton. And what you can do is you can talk with the kids about what, is, what do you see in this image. You can do see, think, wonder with it, right? So let's talk about C. Tell me what, let's just do C for a minute. What's, what do you see in the stage image? How is it staged? Tell me some things, some things you see. They're all facing the audience, really important. That's a critical thing, right? Your stage picture needs to have everyone facing the audience. Second thing is, what about the color? Purple. What? Why I'm sorry, what? The purple color. What about it? Right, because the purple color is in there in the center. What else do you see? In purple, with purple, and everyone else is wearing white, right? Or off-white. What else do you see? They're all connected. They're all touching. There's one image there. What else do you see? Look at that. So they're slightly looking above your eyesight in the audience. Right above, right there at a spot above it. That's important. What else? The lighting, the lighting. showing where they were, so obviously I'm 
Right, lighting coming right down there in the middle and going out darker. What shape are they in? What shape are they in? Like, if you look at it, it's a classic, classic Renaissance painting style, right? It's a triangle. And if you look at classic Renaissance paintings, they will often be organized into a triangle. The famous paintings of Mary holding Jesus is a triangle. The Pieta, Michelangelo, is a triangle. Okay, so you see that triangle right there. Another one. Again, the triangle, right? With the light kind of creates the triangle there in a certain sense. Different levels. Here we're not touching as much, but what do we see? Different levels, three different levels. Boom, boom, boom. What else? Right. Facing front and center. What about distinct? What about the hands? Very distinct, very like simple. Right. This 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 image here, right? What else do you see? Ooh, not front and center, but softened with the angle, right? Very nice. Nice observation. What else? Costumes and props bring to mind, like warfare. Costumes, props have a specific distinct, yeah. And look at the, notice the parallel lines, lines down with the guns. So that's really interesting. I mean, these are really wonderful to look at with kids, right? And to look at the different possibilities. Here's one, the first one, they're all touching. Look at this one. They're all, you can use space. Here, they're separated across the entire stage. So every stage picture doesn't have to be every one in one big clump. You can spread out and create a stage picture with space. Another one that's just like that, right? Again, the looking up. Let's move to another musical, another show. Here's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Julie Taymor is a famous director. She also directed one that you all know and one that your kids would love. This is still A Midsummer Night's Dream. This is a different production. Look, look at this one. Lion King, right? So Julie Taymor, who directed Lion King, was a puppeteer and visual artist before she was a director. So all of her, if you've watched the movie Frida that she directed, uh, has a very visual style. So kids love to look at these things, right? And you could talk about any of these images with students. This is a famous Philip Glass opera. And then SpongeBob SquarePants the musical, right? Even look, look at that image in color and the, the way that, the, uh, that it's staged. So what I'd like for you to do is you're going to create a stage picture slideshow. You have four images. Now this is something you could really do with kids. It really works. With first graders, we had to create each one at a time. They, couldn't, they had trouble sequencing them. It took us a lot of work to sequence them, but they could certainly create each one one at a time. Uh, older kids can do a slideshow like we're going to do, like second graders. Even first graders with practice can do it. Kindergartners, first graders can do it with practice. Here's what you're going to do. Uh, for each of your images, you have four, you're going to create a stage picture. Take time to plan it. Take time to make it look beautiful. Take time to create that aesthetic look. A stage picture for each one. Four clear stage pictures. That's all you have to do. OK, you ready to go? OK, go for it. With our bodies? Yeah, with your bodies. Yeah, with your whole bodies. Your whole group needs to be in each one. Everyone in it, each one, whole body. Oh, I go. Uh, I go. One more instruction important. Keep the same character throughout. If you have a person that's Iggy in number one, have that person be Iggy in number two. If you have Miss Greer in one, have her be Miss Greer in two, okay? Let's go for it. <laughs>